Today's video is about momentum. A lot of this you've actually done before at GCSE, um, and with A levels, certainly year 12 momentum for AS, we don't go much further in that than that in terms of theory. We connect it a bit more in the background a little. Um, but of course the questions get become a little trickier and you have to be very sure of yourself. So what is momentum? We often hear the word momentum used for sports teams, for example. You might say that a particular football team has gained momentum through the season and seems to be unstoppable. And that's the sort of idea that we use it for in physics as well. It is a quality that a moving object has that makes it more and more difficult to stop. The actual definition is unusually enough based on the equation. And we say that momentum, given the symbol P, is a product of an object's mass and its velocity. And because of that, it has the units of mass multiplied by velocity, kilograms, meters per second. A little bit of a mouthful when you're describing it, but nonetheless, that's what it is. So it describes the quality of a moving object. One of the main things that we have to be able to do is to connect momentum in with force. And we know from our studies of Newton's laws that a resultant force is mass times acceleration. We also know that acceleration is V minus U over T. So we can substitute V minus U over T for A in here, giving us M on V minus U over T. And if you multiply that out, you'll see that is MV minus MU over T. So our resultant force is this. Now, using our usual nomenclature, MV is mass times the final velocity, and MU would be mass times initial velocity. So what this is telling us is that change in momentum over time is equal to a resultant force. And in real terms, that means if you have a moving object that has a mass and a velocity, if you want to change the momentum of that object, the product of its mass or velocity, you have to apply a resultant force. If we look at the cricketer over here, you can see the way that he's holding his hands like this and what happens when the ball comes in here. Now that ball is going pretty quickly, and although it may not have a large amount of mass, it does have a quite a large velocity, meaning it has quite a lot of momentum. And so the practical application of this is if he wants to change the momentum of that ball, obviously he wants to catch it, and therefore he wants to stop it. The MV that he wants is zero. But of course, he's got to take away all of the momentum that the ball has. What he can do is he can stick his hands up and let the ball slam into them. But of course, you end up doing that, changing the momentum of the ball in a very short time. And this time here becomes very critical because the shorter the time, then the greater the resultant force required. So if he sticks his hands up and lets the ball slam into them, then he's going to be applying quite a large force on the ball and that's going to hurt. So instead, what people do is they reach their hands up and they pull them back as the ball collides with their hands so that they increase this time over which the ball slows down. They increase the time over which the momentum changes and that decreases the resultant force. And this has a lot of applications, not just in catching cricket balls, but in crash mats and cushions and padding on the floors of children's playgrounds. All of these things are there to increase the time slightly over which the momentum of an object is changed and therefore reduce the force. And of course, bumpers on cars, uh, crumple zones on cars, seat belts and airbags all work in exactly the same way. The idea is, again, increase the time so that you decrease the force. Now, of course, we know that this expression, the resultant force is equal to mass times acceleration, is Newton's second law. And so this is the first connection that we see between momentum and Newton's laws. And in fact, Newton himself quoted his second law in terms of the change in momentum and not as acceleration. It was just derived to the acceleration equation later. One of the fundamental universal principles is that of conservation of momentum. Momentum is always conserved in any interaction 
between two bodies, provided no external force acts, no other force coming in from outside. And so we're going to look at a number of interactions here, the most common, of course, being collisions and explosions. And we have a couple of types of collision. So suppose, as in scenario A here, we have a truck that is stationary, and it is crashed into from the back by a car. In this case, the momentum of the truck before the collision is zero. And of course, the car has a momentum of mv in that direction. When the car crashes into the truck, the total momentum of the system remains the same. So our total momentum is still mv the same as the initial momentum of the car. Now, of course, the car is going to stop in this scenario, as we can see in the picture, but the truck is going to gain a little momentum in the forward. So you'll see that the truck budges forward a little. But because of the much bigger mass of the truck, the gain in its velocity is going to be much less. And it doesn't continue on there because, of course, another external force does act, the friction of the truck with the ground, and eventually, of course, it will slow down and stop. So it may be, with a very small car like this and a very large truck, there's a minuscule change in the forward momentum of the truck, but it will be there. The other thing you have to be aware of here is that momentum is a vector quantity. So you need to assign a sign to momentum. Now, in a situation like this, where everything is operating in the same direction, it doesn't really matter. But if we come to a situation like this, a head-on collision, now, traditionally, right is given positive, so this car here would have a momentum of M1, V1, let's call it, for M1 being the mass of the car on the left and V1 being its velocity. This car here, as it's coming in the opposite direction, would have a momentum of minus M2, V2. Now, again, regardless of the fact that they are going in opposite directions, their total momentum before and after will be the same. So you would add our momentum one from here to our momentum two from here to get the total momentum of the system before impact. And then you know that the total momentum after impact is exactly that number. And depending on what happens, these cars could stick together, they could spring apart, pieces could fly off, the total momentum of all those parts after will add up to whatever these momenta were before. The other common type of interaction between two bodies is an explosion like this. This is a rather dramatic example of it. It could be a much simpler explosion like two people on ice pushing each other away. It could be a particle breaking into two parts or a radioactive particle emitting something. All of those are considered to be explosions. And for year 12, we only have to worry about explosions that happen along a line. So we'll forget about the fact that there are all these parts up here, and we focus on objects that move in opposite directions. Now, if the object is stationary before, then we know that the momentum before is going to be zero. When the object explodes off to the right, it would have a momentum of positive mv. The part that explodes to the left will have a momentum of negative mv. And we know, without any doubt, that those two added together will be equal to zero. So the theory behind this is very straightforward. You just need to make sure that you have your signs correct, and then whatever you had before, you will have after. There is one particular special situation. That is, suppose you hit a tennis ball against a wall, and the tennis ball bounces off the wall and comes back. What is its change in momentum? And this is where the sign becomes very important. It's not a very good drawing of a tennis racket. So as it moves right towards the wall, the tennis ball has a momentum of mv. Supposing it loses no speed in, it, in connection with the wall, it's a bit of a stretch, but let's assume that. 
then coming back, it has a momentum of minus mv. So what's its change in momentum then? Well, its change in momentum is the final momentum minus the initial momentum, which is minus mv minus mv, giving us a total change in momentum of minus 2mv. And that is a very important point to remember, that when you get reflections or bounces like this, you have to track your sign very carefully. What about the connection with Newton's laws? Well, we've already seen that the most obvious connection is Newton's second law, otherwise known as F equals MA. So that's the first one. The second one is, of course, in the colliding objects. And if we had take two balls rolling towards each other, ball A and ball B, we know they're going to collide. We know the momentum before is equal to the momentum after. We should also remember that when they collide, object A exerts a force on object B. And according to Newton's third law, object B will exert an equal and opposite force on object A. And presuming there are no other forces acting, these are the forces that are causing the change in momentum. So you can describe collisions like this in terms of the change in momentum and overall conservation of momentum, or you can describe them in terms of the forces that ball A and ball B, object A and object B, whatever the scenario is, are exerting on each other. And knowing that those forces cause a change in momentum, you end up with the same calculation.